Okay. Can everyone see that? Is that working? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so this will probably be boring for Akhil and Carl, who uh, were there when I gave this same talk last week at the Canberra meetup. Um, I so loved it so much, I'm happy to hear it again. <laughs> it's really cool. I was there too, virtually. All right, cool. Yeah, good talk, Toby. Well, um, I hope you enjoy it the second time around as well. Uh, so my talk is content authors are real people too, uh, or how not to terrify 1.42 million people. So uh, a bit of background on myself first. Uh, I was once a lowly website publisher. Uh, that is the Department of Education, Employment and Workplace Relations website. Uh, that's where I started as an APS4 website publisher, basically copying content from Word documents. Uh, and into SharePoint 2007, which was would have been a great intranet software tool, um, but they decided to use it as the, the main public facing external tool. And it absolutely sucked from a publishing point of view. And to be honest, from most points of view, it was, it was absolutely terrible. If you've used SharePoint uh, at all in the back end, you'll know that content editing interface is not great. And it was the same back in 2007. Uh, after that though, I graduated and I became a real person uh, and I became a website developer. Uh, I used AI for a bunch of images in this and this one, I just said the Drupal logo uh, hugging someone. So there's a uh, Creative Commons or more so Creative Commons Drupal plushie if anyone wants to make that. So I graduated from publishing into development. Uh, I got to leave SharePoint behind, thank God. Uh, and yeah, really embraced Drupal. Started right at the start of Drupal 7. The first site I was on was, was a Drupal 6 site was just being thrown away and being rebuilt into 7. Uh, but even as a developer, I tried never to forget my roots as a content author, which is where I started. So ballistic missile threat inbound to Hawaii, seek immediate shelter, this is not a drill. Does anyone remember this from 2018? Yep. Yeah, it was the 2018 Hawaii missile attack false alarm, even though it says it's not a drill, it was in fact a drill. Uh, for 38 minutes, uh, 1.42 million people in Hawaii thought they were about to die due to a ballistic missile attack, probably from Russia or North Korea or something. So for 38 minutes, the message went out and then there was no other communication. Everyone thought they were gonna die. Uh, and if you look into, there's been a, quite a few stories written about it, uh, including what people started Google searching during those 38 minutes, which is uh, a bit of fun. So how did it happen? Well, it's a system, so someone built the system. Uh, the system was built. It sent out a message. Awesome, job done, right? Not quite. So the user should have clicked on a button. I say button, you'll see in a second, that says drill, parcom, CWD, state only. What they actually clicked on was the exact same thing, but without the word drill at the start. They're not grouped together logically. So like I've I've actually added some extra spaces here to make sure or it all lines up so you can actually see the difference here. Not so much with the actual system. And they're not even buttons with pop-ups, they're just text hyperlinks. That is the actual interface uh, that someone leaked a photo of. So they were supposed to have clicked on this one with drill at the start but they just would have read down the list and gone, oh, test message, oh, Paycom, that's the one I was told to, and it's under test message, I'll just click that. So let's think about that project for a second. They would have been focus groups. You know, how are we gonna send this message out? Are we gonna send it out via SMS? Do we want people to download the Hawaii app? Uh, are we gonna do automated phone calls? Are we gonna have alerts and sirens blaring everywhere? Uh, I can imagine there being like a week long argument between two PMs, some one saying, I think seek immediate shelter 
is more of the active voice rather than seek shelter immediately. You know, maybe what what wording are we going to put around that? Uh, you know, is it insensitive that we're only sending this message out in English? You know, should we be sending it in, I don't know the name of the Hawaiian native language, but, you know, are we sending it out in multiple languages? Are we only, you know, are we showing white pride here by only alerting the English speakers that they're about to die? You know, how many millions of dollars was spent on that project? Think about that, because this is a real project. I'm thinking, you know, at least double digits. No one seemed to have asked who is actually going to be pushing that button. Who is the, in our instance, who's the content author using the administration interface? All right. So think about you. Who are your user groups? Here's another AI image where I said, just put, generate me an image of someone asking questions. And you can tell it's AI because it says, I'm just asking questions. So AI is coming for our job, but it can't spell. So I think we're okay. Who are your user groups? Uh, depending on the sites that you're managing, you know, it could be reporters and people in the media. This is a lot of the user groups that I'm used to dealing with. Being up in Canberra, I work mainly in GovCMS and mainly been working in government departments for, for so long. This is probably my primary user group. Same with thing with research and policy writers for me, but, you know, it could be anyone. Small business owners, single parents, the elderly is another big user group. Missile alert technicians, maybe. Maybe they're one of your user groups. Content authors, are they one of your user groups? Spoiler alert, yes, they are. So I'm just going to take an example here of Services Australia. Thinking about the concept of divorce. Not everyone wants to think about that, but it's something people go through. You were first, you were happily married, you had some kids, no, you're not anymore, and you owe someone some money. Don't worry, Services Australia has got you covered. You go to the homepage, there's a nice big card here, raising kids. Yep, that's what I'm doing. Click on that. You go to a landing page, separated parents. Yes, I am a separated parent now. Bang, click on that. You go to the child page for managing child support. That's exactly the information that you're after in this instance. As a single dad, owing money to my ex-wife, I spent five minutes on the Services Australia website, drilled down through landing pages, found the exact content I was after. Now I'm off to the pub. So it's really clear here that they spent time thinking about their user journey, the user journey of single parents. Now, I have not worked personally with this website, so I don't know if they thought about the user journey of content authors, but... This is just an example I wanted to bring up where it's a big website. They've obviously spent time on it, but have they spent time in the back end? Because user groups define how the site is built. Uh, it's clear on that site that there was time and money and energy spent into their key audiences. Uh, the navigation is set up for that, breaking down content. Like we've all built sites before. We all know how much fun it is to be in meetings with marketing people and and UX and UI people. Um, but that content, that single parent only spends like five minutes on the website. Content authors could be spending hours on your website. Uh, this was another AI generated image, but there's actually nothing wrong with it. I think he's even got the right amount of fingers. So yeah. uh, as an example, uh, this, uh, a call to action I had to make. Uh, it was almost a call to a craption, though. So I had to make a call to action component. I'm sure we've all been there before. Uh, the background behind the text uh, could have been an image or it could have been a solid color. It depended. You know, the content author was given that opportunity. So the buttons had to complement the con complement and contrast against the image for accessibility. Uh, the project manager suggested we just give them a color picker field. That way they can just, content author can just go, oh, the text will be behind the purple part, so I'll make the link green, and that'll be fine. Easy to implement, meets the brief, finished before lunch, done, signed off, git, push, done, awesome. Except this would have actually required six different color fields. 
they would need one for the text background color, the text color, the button background color, the button text color, the button background hover color, the text hover color. It would have been hell to actually manage for a content author. Unfortunately, the project manager loved the idea. Gave them so much control and flexibility, you know, that it wouldn't matter what came up there, they'd be able to choose the right color. Till I pointed out that that means that their content author, every time they uploaded an image, would have to not only choose those six or more colors, they would then need to go into a color contrast analyzing tool to make sure it meets the WCAG accessibility guidelines, or they could risk being sued. So I managed to convince them instead to use just a simple drop down list of six color options based on their existing branding. Um, if it was up to the, the program manager, the content author would have had a terrible experience. Won't someone think about the children? Or for a lot of people here, won't someone think about the future business opportunities? That's the important stuff we've got to think about, right? You know. Oh my God, I love your website. It's so easy to use. The graphics are amazing. It works so well on mobile. I heard you won all the Webby Awards. You know, who made it for you? Oh, thanks. It was built by Toby Core. Oh, cool. I'll give him a call then. Don't. It's the worst thing in the world to manage. It takes 50 button presses to update a publication. We have to manually type in all the HTML tags we use. It's the worst content editing experience in the world. Oh, that sounds terrible. Yes, it would be terrible. So think about those content authors, the ones that are using your websites that you've built all the time. When someone comes to them and says, oh, I love your website, who built it for you? They might go, yeah, it looks pretty. But as someone who has to slog through uploading the same document in five different places, that's the advice that they're going to give to people. So it's not just about making sites accessible, making sites easy to use. It's honestly, it's good for the bottom line to spend time and energy making a good content editing experience because those people will become your champions. So what is something that you can do about it? Uh, the manage form display tab. It's really good. You can put field groups in to group like-minded fields together, you know, use tabs and accordions to get common fields that aren't going to be used a lot, like meta tags, put them in their own tabs so that they're not visible straight up, but you can easily find them. Uh, put field descriptions in. This is something I'm guilty of pretty much never doing, but it's always a good idea. Um, and choose your field widget wisely. It's not always the, the field widget that is in there by default that's the right one, you know? Is it uh, auto-complete tag style or is it auto-complete? Is it a select list or a checkbox or a radio? Um, you know, choose the right field widget for the right instance. And your admin theme, customize it, even with a bit of CSS to align field labels and field inputs. A little bit of CSS can go a long way with making a, a content interface that you can look at and read and not have to look at and keep zigzagging your head back and forth because your labels are really long and your fields are really short. Uh, the Jin theme uh, is a great administration theme. I've used a bunch. Um, and uh, customizing it with a bit of JavaScript if you have to, to just hide and show fields uh, that you can't get if you can't get that functionality from field groups. Just little 1% tweaks in the content editor interface now can make it so much easier for people to use. Uh, and empathy. Empathy is a big one that a lot of people forget. I've worked uh, in some government departments with some people that just don't understand the concept of empathy. You know, how would you feel if you were using that website day in and day out? You know, it's all good. You're building the site. You're putting a bit of con uh, test content in there and pushing it out and going, oh, yeah, that, that was a bit annoying. But, hey, the, the content's up there and it's looking great. How would you feel having to do that little hacky thing that you just did, you know, for eight hours a day? Could your parents update the page? You, know, you want to make that content interface smooth and easy to use. So we've seen some examples there of what could be done. What did Hawaii do to address their problems? 
well, they blamed insufficient management controls. They did blame poor software design and human factors. So blame, blame, blame. That's obviously a government project. Uh, that employee had been temporarily reassigned to a position that didn't allow them access to that button, and that person was ultimately fired. And they decided to require two people to now have like a, a two-key system, uh, which, even though they blamed human factors, you know, they decided to add in some more human factors. So I'm not sure if that was the best solution. But hey, mission accomplished, right? What could they have done? Well, they could have made a better UI. And a contest, someone ran a contest on the freelancer.com website to crowdsource some better options. And here's just a couple that I really liked. You know, you've got an obvious green test drills, yellow warning, red alerts, very, very clear there to see at a glance what is what. And on the right-hand side there, you've got a pretty nice interface, a little bit hard to read at a distance. Uh, but everything broken up into panels, big icons, really nice, really easy to understand. Uh, and because I'm giving a talk on the internet, not everything I said was true. So here's some truths that didn't fit my narrative for this talk. Uh, the employee that had actually pressed that button had been a source of concern uh, for the last 10 years. And it wasn't the first time that they'd confused events, uh, drills and real things before. Um, there's some con conflicting reports about if there is actually a confirmation screen or not. Um, and they have since implemented a false alarm message that they can send out. So they have done something more than just add an extra step to the process. But, you know, we'll see if that works. I mean, they haven't had another incident since 2018. So maybe, maybe it did work. So some final thoughts. And that's my little AI image of missile attack coming down on Hawaii. Uh, next time you do a little work around when you're adding some content, think to yourself, look, you know, I just need to copy this, click here, paste it here, change this tag, toggle these three buttons on, unhide this thing, and then do that. Look, it's so easy. My content's up there. Imagine doing that little hack of yours consistently back and forth for eight hours a day. You'll hate doing it. So figure out a better way for someone else to do it in the future. Yeah, so that was it. I kind of steamrolled through the whole thing. Um, but that was it. Uh, any questions, I guess? Dallas is posting in the chat saying, empathy, what's that? Yeah. What is a human factor? I'm just asking questions. Questions. <laughs> hey, good, good, so good some, some people yeah. seriously lack empathy on a on a real core fundamental basis. I, I remember watching a, uh, a documentary that showed um, apes. Um, and when an ape was beat up by another ape, without uh, reason, the other apes singled out the person to beat them up. Like they can understand empathy. And yet I've worked with some SES that still can't. So I'm like, come on people. Any other questions? Comments? Tyler is saying good talk, great talk, Toby. Yeah, great talk. And it, your experience is overlooked when Drupal gets updated and modules change. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Do you have any advice or suggestions on like, like, let's just say I'm a content, you know, content author. Like, what what advice would you give to me to like help make my, uh, you know, my my needs heard in the organization? Or you know, like, um, you know, like how 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 can I as a content author like help the marketing department or help the, you know, the user experience team understand, like, is, is it up to me or would I wait for them? You know, like what's no, any advice? My advice would be don't wait for them because mm -hmm. they might lack empathy and would never think about you in the first place. Sure, so sure. definitely raise it to them. Like a lot of times they'll, uh, I'm working on a project at the moment where they're bringing content authors in to rewrite a lot of the content on the website. Mm -hmm. And it's when you're flagged for that kind of thing that, content authors need to stand up and go, 
more than happy to help with the content on the website, but I'd love a say in how the content authoring experience is going to be, especially if that's going to be part of my role going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we spend lots and lots of time, like UX and UI designers, you know, crafting the best user experience for the public users, which is important for sure. Um, but if they just spent, you know, one sprint's worth of time looking at the content editing interface, I think that would solve a lot of problems. So even, and it's, a lot of it can be small things like little 1%, little 5% fixes can end up with a, a massive uh, impact. Simply reordering fields so that you're adding content into the interface in the same way that uh, it, same way that it's viewed on screen or same way that you're thinking about it, or maybe you've got uh, someone, you're con still doing content in Word docs and it's come through in a certain template and the fields are in this order, match the order. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Little things like that. Um, All right. Cool. That, cool. that I think yeah. everyone can do. Yeah, thanks. I I don't want to take up all the time, but I have I have other a couple of other questions just because I think it's it's a really interesting topic for me. But I'll let other people go if they have questions. I was just going to say when I do um talks on the user side of things, I often call the um the editors the forgotten audience because they're very important. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. And just a little like there that yeah, civic themes. <laughs> Thing that we built it has quite a bit of consideration on the admin side. That was uh, partly my input into changing things, reordering it, changing tabs, and all that stuff. So, yeah, it's good. I did a similar uh, topic um, two two years ago, and uh, the one thing that stood out for me is if you've got a button to say left, center, or your type of alignment, but you don't know how it's going to look in the front end, so you. Content author puts out, I was like, ah, put it on center, but actually it needs to be left aligned, right aligned. Uh, that visual effect, they don't see that. And I think once Drupal actually enhance that feature or put in a screenshot of how it's going to look like, that will be fantastic. Yeah, Dr uh, Drupal has definitely come a long way in itself, just having that kind of in-place editing that they're starting to, to be more compatible with more modules. Uh, you know, back in D7 days, you'd have to go into the interface to edit anything. Um, but now at least with 10, you know, there's a, there's a bit of in-place editing that's a bit more robust. Yeah, Starshot. Um, are, are you familiar at all with, with uh, the promise of Starshot? Uh, be... A little bit, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I think one of the things that excites me about Starshot, it gives the power to, to the editors. It gives power to you guys. Um, you know, you can, you, you don't, you can, you uh, can kind of, uh, in particular, it's actually um, a lot of it's, it's a personal opinion, but I think a lot of it's targeted for marketers um, who who want the um, the power to, to create their own landing page, or you know, and they don't want to go through the IT team to to, to do that. Um, but I think a lot of a lot of what's uh, you know, because in some many ways, Drupal's playing catch up to to a lot of the other uh, CMSs out there. And um, so Starshot is, a, if you're interested, I think Starshot would be, would love to hear, you know, your opinion as content editors, because that's, the, that's the promise. We, we make content editing better and, and awesome. Um, and a lot of it goes to the content editors, which is scaring a lot of teams right now. So let's, uh, it's, it's an exciting space. So anyway. Yeah. Well, in that case, they should probably just reach out, like find like the top, Hundred Drupal websites, and then reach out to the comms team of those sites. Not mm, the, that's not a good the, advice. Not okay. the people who, like us, it's, it's also who built the website, but the the people who are actually using it on a day to day basis. Mm -hmm. They're the ones you want to get the insight from. That's fantastic. Yeah, because because there's some re user research floating around too, and I'm, I'm like looking at it because, and I'm like. <laughs> they interviewed like four or five people. <laughs> I know I'm like as a, 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 anyway. So I'm like. There needs to be more user research. <laughs> so I'm trying to help out in that area as well. So yeah. That's that's a good good point, Toby. Thank you. Any more questions, comments by anybody? All right, then I'll stop recording. <laughs>